You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation, old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now your hosts, Shane and Jason. The podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, for more information, just visit pasnia.com. And uh, please do keep a lookout on a book. Uh, keep, keep a couple, please keep a lookout for a book on the subject, uh, further describing the vision of the Second Realm Network, uh, this parallel society, and how you can get involved. Uh, also, keep an eye out for a podcast in the near future uh, with a similar objective. Uh, there have been some common confusions uh, that need to be addressed, and uh, I figure going back to square one might be beneficial uh, for um, for everybody in, in addition to me. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, just visit Paznia.com and uh, download the 2021-2022 Stakeholder Bulletin, available right there at the top of the page. Uh, that's the next best thing available uh, available right now, actually. Uh, you can also come out to Veritas Paznia and uh, pick up a physical copy, uh, of course, if you're vetted and uh, ever in the area. Uh, we're located about an, an hour and a half northeast of St. Louis. So today, I welcome back uh, a new, or I welcome a new guest to the podcast, uh, Brandon Aragon from the or Aragon from the Agoras Nexus, uh, a website featuring a podcast, uh, Agoras Business Directory, lots of articles, and really uh, just an overall terrific resource uh, in building the Agora. Uh, I must also express my sincere appreciation to Brandon and to Agoras Nexus in general uh, for the opportunity to uh, serve as article editor and contribute uh, contributor there. Uh, it's amazing and uh, truly a genuine honor to uh, do what I love and uh, get paid some Bitcoin for it. So, uh, um, yeah, I do have a, a rough outline for our conversation today, uh, including agorism as a path to financial independence, uh, how this strategy has played a role in Brandon's liberation uh, personally, uh, re-examining Konkin's overall vision of starving the state with the power of hindsight, uh, the key differences between being an agorist versus a counter-economist, uh, the current need for counter-economic medicine in, in, these, uh, in this day and age, uh, and advice or experiences he can share uh, in cutting ties to the state and tradi- transitioning to the Agora. And uh, whatever else we happen to stumble across today, we were just talking in pre-show about some some, some Mexico topics, and uh, those are going to be fun to talk about too. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And without further ado, Brandon, uh, welcome to the Vani Podcast, my friend. Uh, how are you doing today? Hey, great. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> I, well, you're always good for sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's truly an honor to to be on the show and uh this is definitely like if anyone asked me you know which podcast you want to be on this would definitely be like in my top two so um yeah just super humbled to to be with you so sure well i i I certainly appreciate that man i certainly appreciate that and uh um yeah it's a long time coming i I meant to i intended to do this uh, to have you on at least you know a year ago or so and um, I guess, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, um, I, yeah, there's some, I guess, some, some dogs barking in the background. Uh, uh, I guess that, that might be the, uh, we might as well just go straight into the Mexico conversation. Um, I guess, uh, do you want to talk a little bit, uh, so do you want to, I guess, talk a little bit about uh, um, your background, uh, what you do, and, uh, um, you know, I guess uh, we'll, we'll kind of start there. Yeah, so my background, um, yeah, uh, I run a site called Agoras Nexus, and um, you know, I guess uh, you know we've got a lot of stuff for Agoras, of course. But there's, you know, and I'm I'm truly, you know, it's truly amazing that we've got the authors that we do. You know, Wendy McElroy, uh, Saul Mayweather, yourself, and and you're an editor there, and then countless others. You know. Lily Forrester, Graham Smith, um, the, the list, the list goes on really. And, uh, and yeah, it's, um, I pretty much wake up every day in a dream, uh, just thinking about, you know, uh, all the people that contribute to the site. And, um, it's, uh, it's truly been amazing experience. Um, uh, I guess we should start like how I got into, uh, you know, Gorism, mm-hmm. um, and you know, forgive me if the, if there are dogs barking in the background. There's some, you know, Mexico. There's some stray dogs. And, uh, <laughs> there sure are. And uh, you know, Mexico is definitely noisy. So, um, so yeah, uh, you know, f- forgive the the background stuff. But um, 
But yeah, I guess to start my agorist path, I have to really explain like my libertarian one. And um, what really pushed me into libertarianism was the Iraq war. And well, I guess I guess the push going into the Iraq war, let me clarify, is, is what is what got me into which really gave me the, the red pill. Um, you know, it was like there's no evidence of weapons of mass destruction. Uh, yet the media had like this big push for it. And um, so, yeah, that year 2002 is what really got me into it. And um, and yeah, that started me on this just this long, uh, grueling journey of self-discovery and uh, self-liberation for sure. And um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, I did, I did vote in like 04 um, when, when I was still like minarchist, I would say. And, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, not proud of, of voting in the past, but, um, but at least I voted for a libertarian and it was uh, the first person I ever voted for was Michael Badnar. So um, I'm just glad that they didn't come into power because I'd resp be responsible. Well, I'd feel like I, I would be responsible for anything that they um, had done. But uh, but yeah, and then so I was like more constitutional. Uh, I'd say like a constitutional libertarian, um, if you can imagine something of the sort. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Ron, Ron Paul really pushed me into minarchism. And then I found agorism in 2012. Um after my disillusion with politics and the low morale of, um, of the Ron Paul campaign. And, um, and yeah, 2018 is where I was like, you know, um, there were some like sites for agorist directories, but they're like, they were old. There's nothing really going on with them. Um, I felt like, I felt like, there wasn't really like just pure um, agorist content out there. There was stuff that was like agorist esque or, um, uh, you know, a lot of libertarian stuff, but, the, but there wasn't really something that just focused on like, um, just focused on just agorism and like had, it, you know, everything agorist, you know? So, um, so yeah, I, and I didn't want to create like just a directory. I wanted to create like multimedia, um, everything to do with the Gorism in every single facet. So like, uh, you know, doc documentaries, which we have now, um, articles. And uh, I'm so glad we can do the, the audio book articles. So we do have like, um, we do have uh, Jeremiah narrating our, uh, our articles in audio form, which I'm, I'm really appreciative of. And, um, and then, yeah, we, I mean, you can even, uh, you can even trade crypto on our site, uh, non KYC wise. So we've, there's like a simple swap swap app that we have on, um, on a Gor on a Gorish Nexus. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. Um, and then we're, we're getting into book stuff. Um, Wendy McElroy should be writing a book for us, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I guess I'm going off on a tangent, but, um, no, it's good. It's but yeah, fun. it's, uh, yeah. So, it's, when, uh, so when, it's, it's when did, when did amazing. you start? When did you, I guess, when did you start, uh, Agoras Nexus? I started it in 2018. Um, it was August of 2018. I got, I got the, um, I set up the Facebook page and that's pretty much all I did uh, in August of 2018. I got the idea in August and then towards the end of August, I set up the, the Facebook page for it. And, um, and then, yeah, there was also a, uh, a Gorish company that I was like helping to do marketing with too. And, um, and, yeah, I was like, there's no directory here for it. So, um, so yeah, I, I decided to create a directory. Um, that wasn't my, like the only thing I wanted to do with it, but, uh, 
but yeah, it was, it was definitely a factor in the creation of um, Agoras Nexus for sure. And uh, and yeah, it took me took me a couple months to. Um, I wanted to be careful with with like the first impressions and like how I wanted to present Agoras Nexus. So it took me a couple months to get like a website and like um, the logo and, um, you know, what our what our 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 goals were and uh, you know what our mission is, and um, so I wanted to be really really methodical about our approach to it. And I don't think I got the website up till um, early 2019. So, but I was um, I was advocating um for agorism and as the agorist nexus facebook page in in uh 2018 and and that's when i started it gotcha very interesting so um i, I guess obviously uh i would i would i would presume and, and from what i know agorism has uh played a, a big role in um i guess helping you achieve uh more liberation um do you want to talk a little bit up a little bit about that and uh uh, what the, what the heck you're doing in Mexico? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Gorism. I guess um, so. You know, as like a, a libertarian, you're kind of like already trying to, you know, avoid taxes to to save money and stuff. But when you become an agorist, like and you know, I guess not everybody has like this life shift um, um, that I did, but when I became an agorist, it had like changed my whole entire life because I, I, um, I was not only trying to avoid, you know, uh, expenses or avoid the state. Um, I was trying to turn my whole, I was, I turned my whole entire life into that, um, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, uh, Mexico is a huge step, um, for that, for, you know, this lifestyle change for agorism. Um, definitely I, you know, I can't say that I really pay much in sales tax at all down here. Um, I, don't have a job, so I, I don't, um, you know, so I, I can't pay income tax. So, um, so yeah, I, I put myself into a situation where I don't really need to um, pay the state much of anything, and uh, and it's great. In Mexico, all my, you know, most of all my neighbors have. Everyone's an entrepreneur down here, and almost all of my neighbors. Um, have their own businesses inside their their houses mm -hmm. and you know most most of everyone doesn't you know buy a license to set up their business and, and of course they don't pay tax and uh and uh, you know everyone just uses cash so so yeah it's it's really it's really great um everything's super cheap so i mean in Mexico, so that helps me live the kind of lifestyle that I want. Mm -hmm. um, I want to live very, very cheaply and, and outside the state. And you know, living in Mexico um, uh, really helps. So, so yeah. Uh, what am I doing in Mexico? Um, I guess. Uh, I guess you know not only gorism but but my wife is is from here um so that was a big push to to move down here and she was uh she was illegal for she was illegal in the u.s so um so you know i, I guess i'm so gorish that even my wife was illegal but uh <laughs> uh but um but yeah, uh, you know, and, and living illegal inside of a country is, um, it's, it's not always easy. There's a lot of doors that, that close, um, not only to her, but her spouse. Like I couldn't, 
like I wasn't really big into college, but if I wanted to um, go to college for something or like pick up a trade, I, I or uh, or well, I could go to college, but I mean like if I wanted a student loan or something, um, I wouldn't be able to do it because I had I would have had to have um, give them my spouse's you know social security number um, because we are le legally married, so. Um, so yeah, just, just, there's lots of doors and stuff that close to you, um, in terms of that. So it just kind of made our lives, um, easier being, being in a, I mean, you know, uh, in terms of counter economic activity, it, it was great, but, um, but, uh, but in terms of just, just, you know, living easier, um, it, it made sense to be here. So. Sure. Yeah, and I and I can I can share. Um, I, I mean, I I can sh I share similar similar experiences and perspectives. Um, I guess longtime listeners of this podcast will know I spent. Uh, pro I think it was November of 2018 to December, mid December of 2018, uh, in Acapulco, uh, with uh, Jason Henza and. Yeah, that was, I mean, that's what he told me. That's what he told me going in. He said, you know, it's, it's definitely more of kind of like, a, you know, kind of like an agorist type um, culture down there. Um, and it's kind of by necessity, too. Um, yeah, everyone's an entrepreneur. I know uh, I, I purchased food plenty of times. Just, you know, someone was, some lady was outside cooking her dinner and she had, it, you know, she, she was, you know, cooking, me cooking meals for people. Obviously, I yeah, had no licenses, no, uh, you know, health permits or anything of, the, anything of that sort. No one ever. Um, hassle them, you know, to, to, to my, I guess, to, to my understanding. They've been there, you know, their family's been there for, for some time. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we went to the, the central market and it's definitely a different experience than, you know, the, the regulated markets here in the, uh, in the USSA. Uh, like obviously when you go to Walmart or, or any of these other grocery <laughs> stores, you don't see, uh, like you don't see, uh, you know, um, you know, fresh animals that have been processed that are there for purchase, whether it's chickens or pigs or whatever it is. Um, so, I mean, it was, uh, and, and you can find anything there, anything there at the central market. So, um, it was definitely a, a really, really neat experience and, and, and beyond just Acapulco, um, I know there was there was there was similar. Obviously, any tourist area, you're going to find those sorts of markets. But um, even if you just, uh, but even if you, um, I guess more locally too, it's just it's it seems like it's uh, a lot more tight knit um, when you go, uh, I guess, south of the USSA border, where people aren't just uh, you know haven't, haven't haven't been programmed to fear each other, um, to fear uh, you know fear strangers, and uh, things like that. So yeah, I I, I can certainly uh, certainly understand that. Um, um, so yeah, I guess uh, there's no, there's no question there, but, uh, um, yeah, I can, I can. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, it is, it is more of like an agorist culture or, or even libertarian culture. Um, I actually had some guy, uh, talk to me and, um, and I, I, I was like super surprised. He, he had said something, he had said, um. Oh, you know, uh, I don't really care as long as um, as long as nobody's hurting anybody. And it was like, bam, you know, like, um, you know, this guy's a libertarian, you know, but uh, but it turns out like most people just just kind of feel and, and think that way down here. Um, so, you know, it's, it's even more of like a, you know, libertarian culture mindset than than even in the uh, even in the the land of the free uh quote unquote mm -hmm. so um and uh and yeah th there's all kinds of like black market stuff that happens um uh you know very often i'm not i'm not just talking about like um drugs or, and stuff i'm talking about like uh you know purchasing firearms and um, illegal uh or black market um turtle eggs when, when they're in season you, you'll have a, a guy uh uh walk around selling them and it's super illegal but um but yeah nobody bats an eye and uh you know nobody like rats anybody out you know uh <laughs> so um so yeah you're absolutely right <laughs> turtle eggs that's uh that's interesting it's interesting as a uh, as a connoisseur of animal products um we got chickens, chickens, ducks, and turkeys here. I, I've never, I, I guess, the thought of turtle eggs never, never crossed my mind. But hey, I'm not really, I'm not surprised that that's a, that's a, that's a thing there. I, um, what was the? Uh, there was some sort of insect that was really, really popular. Um, 
in central Mexico. I looked it up. I, I came across it like a month ago. But um, yeah, there's there's definitely some some interesting stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, turtle turtle eggs, turtle eggs. I'll have to have to ponder that one more. But um, and it, so I guess it, uh, it 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 sounds like just uh, um, it sounds like yeah, Gorism definitely played a role um, in your liberation personally. And I guess that's that's uh, um, that's one reason. I, I, I no, I don't necessarily think. Um, and this kind of moves on to another topic I want to talk about. But um, I personally don't believe like the, the revolutionary strategy that Konkin laid out um, is or really will be the crowning achievement of agorism. Um, and what, what I mean by that is I don't think starving the state economically is going to lead to its abolition, um, especially when considering the money printer. But um, what I do fully, fully acknowledge, and, and, and it's one reason I promote, uh, you know, agorism or ethical enclave trading as it's more, more known, more known um, you know, in Vanu. <coughs> Is that uh, um, it helps you? It gives you the ability to live your to live your principles in the here and now. It's a strategy to do that. If you don't want to support, uh, you know, the institutions of slavery, but uh, um, but further, I mean, if you like, when you when you when you practice agorism, um, you're cutting out, uh, you know, a lot of middlemen, um, so-called, you know, coercive middlemen um, that will uh, that are looking to uh, you know get their cut before you get yours. Um, so if you you cut more of those people out, then uh, you know you have more for yourself and you have more for your family. Um, and uh, I think that's that's uh, that's that's pretty terrific. So um, I guess uh, what 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 are your thoughts on that? Do you do you still or I guess do you, do you think that uh, you know Konkin was was spot on that the strategy will you know will carry out the way that he that he thinks it that he thought it will, or or do you think it's um, you know it might be more of a more of like a personal liberation strategy at this point? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, there's there's um there's no like evidence um that it will uh that it will you know cause you know will end statism right but um but but you're right in in terms of like uh you know counter economics will will you know starving the beast will um can bring down the state for sure and we've seen that in the Soviet Union and um and so i you know and of course after the, the soviet union collapsed of, of course you know a, a different state you know took power um or just like a you know new new government if you will and um but uh so yeah there's i mean there's there's no proof that so i don't necessarily think that counter economics alone will um will end statism but um but i, I think agorism as a whole could um and i think it starts with like a, you know spreading agorism and i think spreading agorism to me is is really uh like an uh, like an agorist action right like um so you know if if we can convince convince people that government is just a system of slavery um which actually I, j I just wrote an article on that, that came out today. Um, if we can convince everyone that the government's just a system of slavery, um, then, then, you know, they'll, they'll realize that we don't need a state in the end. And, um, and yeah, so, uh, so I don't necessarily think that that counter economics can do it alone, but I think agorism is a whole night. And, um, and yeah, I think it starts with spreading ideas and, you know, I guess, I guess, um, I guess I'm countering uh, Michael Mouse's argument, where it's just like, um, you know, we, you know, they're, they're, you know, we, we don't need to convince anybody at this point, and, um, you know, I, I don't think that's the case. I, I think we still do, um, and I, I think despite the, you know, all of the propaganda and the, um, the brainwashing, um, and the billions of dollars spent you know, from this massive machine um, that we're still winning uh, at the end of the day. There's still people waking up every single day. Um, and there's still people learning these these new ideas and libertarianism every single day. Um, so I, I definitely see hope even against, you know, all odds and this, this huge, you know, beast. Uh, we're still managing to... Um, wake people up so yeah 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 i i know i i i think it, i think it i mean um because we i i put out an article um on agorist next it's also on the vani podcast feed too but um going along with i guess more the the financial counter economics the the cerebral cognitive counter economics um where uh 
<clears throat> where I guess there there is kind of that uh, there is that, that that philosophical aspect of it too, um, where um, yeah, in the USSR there could, there might have been a you know a huge counter economy, um, but uh, that's main, mainly just because more and more things became illegal and it became a necessity for people's survival. Um, things got things got that rough. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think yeah, what what was missing there was kind of that distinction. Um, and agorism, the distinction would be, you know, agorist versus counter economist. And for in Venuan terms, it would be, um, you know, the ethical enclave entrepreneur versus, uh, you know, an individual who would feel guilt um, for their actions. Um, like they don't have that philosophical or ethical conviction to it. So yeah, I think that might be the that might be the difference. Is, um, you know, the, the the practice, the strategy is there and it's, it's effective. Um, but uh, maybe yeah, really, what the, the the missing piece is. Um, is yeah, convince, I guess convincing folks of the philosophical and ethical and moral underpinnings. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it really, it's really just where we need like hearts and minds um, to be changed. Um, you know, phil philosophically, and um, you know, I had said earlier uh, that. Uh, that once I found out about agorism, that like, you know, there's this big shift in my life. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely true. Like, you know, I think, I think that there's even a shift from just being a libertarian to an agorist. I think there's a huge shift. And, uh, uh, me personally, there was. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I would agree with you 100%. I, I don't really know. Um, I don't really have anything else on that. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. that's that's, that, that's that's yeah, that's interesting. And um, hmm, hmm, yeah, I I I, I would I would uh, yeah, that's 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 interesting. I guess uh, the, the the next place I'll I'll, I'll kind of uh, I'll take this to um, is uh, um, a similar counter economic topic, but one that uh, Sekmagora um, you know mentioned in uh, uh, mentioned uh, in response to a, a tweet. You know, soliciting you know questions and such and he mentioned counter economic medicine um in these times and i think it's uh, that's that's another important conversation and, and another another angle uh another possible way to uh you know reach more folks um is uh you know kind of kind of that angle um if you look at uh, here in the ussa like 50 per over 50 percent of people my age and, and uh and younger um have you know chronic you know so-called chronic disease and it's from chronic poisoning um, and, uh, eventually I think people are, are going to become, you know, become aware of, 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 these sorts of things, you know, uh, um, become aware that it's, it's the Rockefeller allopathic medicine model. And, uh, that opens up a lot of interesting opportunities for, um, you know, agoras, agoras and, and, you know, counter economic practitioners and things like that. Um, I mean, uh, um, yeah, there's, there's, uh, and even, even just going more towards, um, like the, the just the open source outfit, I believe in Southern California who are trying to decentralize insulin production. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that's another huge avenue, a huge way, um, is, uh, is, is first off, um, you know, um, there's, uh, there's more efficacious, um, modalities and methodologies out there, um, to, to restore balance in the body. And, uh, lots of people are, are seeking that now and lots of people are going to be seeking that from, uh, you know, what's, what's transpiring today and, and what will continue to transpire. So, um, you know, offering solutions and, uh, you know, helping people, um, if, uh, people are, you know, able to do so. And, uh, I guess, uh, um, yeah. And, and, in the area of, uh, you know, new, new opportunities for, um, counter economic doctors and, and practitioners, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of them right now. Um, so yeah, what, what do you, what do you think about, uh, the prospects of counter, counter economic medicine on uh, today's, today's age? Yeah, I love it. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, you know, especially with like, um, COVID, you know, the COVID vaccine, um, certificates and uh you know things like that you know you you can prove that you've gotten a vaccine without actually getting one which i think is is going to be paramount if you um if if you don't want to and and you know nobody can say that uh nobody can say that that, that the covid vaccine is is safe um because the definition of safe is like without risk without harm so um there is risk in, in taking it. There, people do have uh, reactions towards it, and I love the fact that uh, that people can get around around taking it. Um, 
by getting a COVID, uh, a black market COVID vaccine uh, certificate. But, um, you know, I think that in the future that, uh, you know, the future is going to turn out to be a lot like um, what Germany's doing right now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're clamping down and saying, you know, it's the, um, you, you know, you have to, you have, you know, you're going to have to get it or you're going to go to jail is, is the narrative that we're hearing from Germany right now. And, um, you know, it's like somebody, you know, Hey, uh, Germany's, you know, acting up again. So, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, anything that we can do counter, you know, and, and not, I guess in the medical aspect, not just, um, COVID, but anything we can do, um, counter economically it's it's going to be better uh because we're not giving these we're not giving these slavers uh you know um the funds to to help enslave us so mm -hmm. so yeah absolutely and um i think that uh i think that if we can put ourselves into, you know, and I guess this, this goes along with Vanuism too, um, which I'm, I'm not an expert on and I don't uh, pretend to be, um, but uh, but I guess this kind of goes along with Vanuism too, is if you can put yourself into a situation where you don't have to do, you know, uh, be a servant of the state, you don't have to um, be subservient to them, um, you know, the better off that you're going to be. And I, I think that, um, that we can do that by, I think there's a lot of strategies there and uh, it's one that I'm trying to accomplish myself. Um, you know, I'm trying to get residency in uh, Mexico. I'm also in the middle of getting residency in, uh, uh, residency and citizenship in Nicaragua. And then if I get enough funds, I, I will try to get uh, citizenship on one of these Caribbean islands. So I'm putting, I'm trying to put myself into a situation where even if one, one of these countries, you know, goes full tyrannical, um, that, uh, that I can live and, and, and be in a, a country that that's, you know, more free. Um, right. That's a solid point. And, uh, so yeah, I think, um, you know, me personally, I'm trying and I, I sh really should write an article on this. Um, I think there's like different kinds of uh, agorists. Uh, there's like the um, the homesteading agorist, the international agorist, uh, you know, some other ones. But I'm really trying to go the international route because, yeah, because I, I just feel like it gives you s so much more options. You can go where you're treated better. Um, um, and, uh, you know, I, th I think it's a great way to protect you and, and your family, um, for sure. So, and I think they kind of, it goes hands in hand, hand in hand with, uh, with Vanuism. So, um, yeah, which is also a philosophy that, that people should, uh, I, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of the same for me after Agorism, I found out about Vanuism through you. And, um, and then again, I had like another shift, like I was already trying to do Vanuism, but once I found out about it, um, about the, you know, philosophical side about it, uh, I was just more effective. I was more, um, I knew, I knew exactly, you know, what I needed to do. And, um, and so, yeah, I think there's huge benefits in knowing these philosophies and, um, and looking into them, I, I think, I think Per Bylan said, I probably butcher, butchered his name, but um, he's he had said something on Twitter saying that um, all entrepreneurs should look into um, should look into and study uh, Austrian economics um, uh, so that they can they can you know so they can be better entrepreneurs. And it's it's so right. All all um, all humans. You know, I think all human beings should should look into um, agorism and, and vanuism, um, so they can live better lives and and protect themselves. So, mm -hmm. yeah.
Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And, and, and yeah, that's the, um, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, um, you know, hopefully bring, you know, I guess, bring to fruition Konkin's vision of, uh, of starving the state and then smashing it and having having the free society. Um, well, yeah, agorism and even, you know, and, and Vanu, like, the, uh, and speaking to Vanu specifically, yeah, it's about, you know, building lifestyles resilient to coercers and coercion uh, in the here and now, um, you know, regardless mm-hmm. of whether others, uh, you know, get here, uh, you know, get to where we are. And, uh, and and we have that free society. We can we can start living our principles. We can start trading with people that we want to trade with, and what we want to trade with, um, you know. Now uh, we don't. Uh, we we definitely don't have to wait. And and well, yeah. Again, it would be uh, fantastic, um, you know, to uh, you know to take down Babylon and restore Eden. But uh, um, you know, it's uh, um, worldwide. Yeah, might not uh, might not happen. Uh, you know, soon. So why am I why am I going to wait to be free? Right. That's that's been my philosophy and kind of my mindset. Uh, yeah, since 2015 is, uh, um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily foresee, um, foresee it that, you know, well, the free, the free, first free countries already in existence with the free Republic of Pasnia, but, uh, more seriously speaking, um, I don't see a, you know, a course, worldwide, a worldwide free country, um, or, you know, I guess just world, a worldwide free society. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of hurdles there, a lot to, a lot to overcome and not that they can't be overcome, but it might take, it might take a little while, um, is all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh. You know, you can't really help free other people in, unless you're free yourself. So for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. For sure. For sure. Um, so it, you've already kind of gone, you've already kind of spoken to some of these things and, and uh, um, back in, back in terms of volume mobility is, is absolutely crucial, absolutely key. And being internationally mobile was something that Rayo talked about uh, in, in his book, uh, Vani, the Search for Personal Freedom, as well as uh, I talked about it in my book too, with, uh, you know, discussing the five flag theory and, and, uh, and and other and other aspects of it, um, so that's definitely a really really valuable um, really valuable one. And there are a couple. I'll mention just a couple entrepreneurial I've dropped. I've dropped them in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat before. But uh, you can buy you can buy planes with Bitcoin now. Uh, you can just buy a trip with Bitcoin. You know, like like a, you know like a private plane where you don't have to go through all the nonsense that you would have to go to go through uh, you know um, commercially. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of. A lot of new opportunities uh, in the realm of international mobility, and uh, speaking in terms of nation states, um, you know, small nations, you know, small nations that you know would want to attract tourism. Um, this sets up some interesting ground, interest, I guess, an interesting, uh, <clears throat> an interesting playing field for uh, countries that might, uh, you know, not have any restrictions, um, you know, like like uh, immigration restrictions or tourist restrictions, and uh, you know, be able to snag up a, a good part of the, that tourism market. So, um, I guess uh, r- rambling aside, um, I guess, uh, um, yeah, we're we're all on our own. I guess our own individual journeys, uh, you know, out of the first realm, out of the Srival Society. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not quite there myself. Um, do you have any, I guess, any other suggestions or advice you would have? Um, for folks who are who are, are trying to you know cut further cut ties to the state uh, and kind of some of some of your experiences some other experiences you may have yeah um, yeah definitely and and you know it's not just like all about um, crypto of course right like I, I think I think you kind of have to be able to make yourself invulnerable um, you have to have some kind of um, savings so even if it's just like buying a uh a silver bar right and i think like what silver prices are 25 dollars an ounce so you can probably buy um you can probably buy a uh silver bullion for um around 30 or or 31 dollars today um so if if you know, one of those bars. So if you just buy a silver coin or or a silver bar, um, you know, once a week or something, uh, that's really going to help. Um, but you know, you need, you need capital, you need some kind of, um, you need some kind of money because what, what is going to happen is because, you know, what is going to happen is that, uh, government, uh, well, these central banks will collapse the currencies for sure. And, and we see this, um, we've seen this, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious today that they're doing that um, because we can see, see it with all the printing that's going on. Um, so yeah, definitely get, get outside of their, um, of their 
money supply uh, because their money supply is going down. So, um, so yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, you know, gold, silver, and uh, and Bitcoin. But I, I think I think just makes you know, you don't have to buy, you know, you, you don't have to go all you know. If you don't have anything, you don't have to go all out. Just just start small. Um, it took me about five years to, to get where I am right now. And, um, and it's going to take me probably another f three or four years to get where, I, where I want to be. Um, so it just takes time. It's a slow process and, uh, and, um, you just have to slowly work your way out. And, um, And, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy, but, um, but you really have to be persistent if you, if you want to be free, if you want to have a free lifestyle, um, if you don't want to be subservient to the state, um, because, because once the currency collapses, um, and usually, you know, um, I believe that they'll become even more tyrannical, uh, because it, because at that point, um, when everything collapses, everybody will be dependent uh, on the government for help at that point. So they'll be able to do almost anything that they want. So, um, so yeah, you know, the, really the answer to that is like a is, you know, you, you can't put yourself into a situation where you're going to be subservient to them. Um, you have to make yourself resilient. Yes. Yes. And I, I think you're right to point out, um, you know, point out the, I guess, the financial aspect first. It's, it's how we started season two on, on this podcast with, with financial independence. And um, again, like it was you know right for, for more reasons than I, I could have imagined back then. But um, yeah, that's the, the kind of choke point of coercion. Um, and the U and here in the USSA and, and also other places too is commerce, um, and you know making making money um, if if uh, you're tied to you know that first time employment. Um, if you haven't uh, you know built up uh, side hustles beyond that, that's really the, the kind of chokehold of coercion. And um, yeah, if uh, if, if uh, you know, hopefully people have been have been like you know working towards that for for years now. For their listeners to the Bonu podcast, hopefully they you know read uh, you know kept up with the Gorus Nexus. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got some, some Bitcoin and such, but, um, you know, if, if not, you know, now's the best time to, to you know, now's the best time. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and I will say just, just speaking personally in terms of liberation, um, the, you, if, of course, like the, the, um, just being able, just barely being able to get by with a survival society job is, is 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 tough enough. But like what I what I most realize what I most realize and, and I guess uh, looking back on on my survival society employment, what what re what it's uh, the the real downside or the real I guess the the real theft um, is the theft of time that, the, that your time isn't your own. Um, that you know these these set times throughout the week you have to go do something for somebody else regardless of how you're feeling regardless of of uh, of uh, you know what's what's happening or what's transpiring like that's that's what you have to do um so um beyond just the financial independence part um you know the, in the personal liberation personal liberation realm um having you know being the being the arbiter of your own time uh is is a really uh, really really freeing um, freeing aspect um have you have you um, noticed that uh, uh in your pursuits as well yeah yeah absolutely um yeah it's you know i i can you know i can do um pretty much you know i can wake up when i want pretty much and unless i uh unless i i have like some kind of appointment but yeah for the most part i can sleep when i want to and i can get up when i want to and um that alone is just like you know uh super freeing and, and like a you know, uh, just, you know, really nice. But, um, but I think to add to that is, is that, uh, man, I had something good, but, uh, but it, it just, I lost it. I lost it there, but, um, <laughs> oh, it happens. 
happens. Well, well hope, hopefully it'll come, um, hopefully it'll come back. Um, hopefully it'll come back, and, and and you'll be able to to answer it. We were talking about the the um, the control. I guess the, the the first realm employment being being mainly a control of time, or not mainly, but uh, at least one one other one other aspect. Um, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, um, I mean, yeah. Well, well if, if if please jump in, please please drop that if it, if it comes back to mind. But um, I would like to, to kind of close out a little bit with uh, talking more about what's to come uh, from Agoras Nexus. Um, what's what you guys got planned over there for the for the future? Um, anything you'd like to discuss on that note? Yeah, yeah. We're doing a. Um, I think we're far enough along where I can say say that we're doing a uh, end game documentary. Um, Hopefully we can release it in uh, summer of 2022. I'm not going to set a, a a date for it, of course, mm -hmm. because um, because when you're making a uh, uh, a video project like this, um, you you don't really want to set dates. But uh, but hopefully summer 2022, um, if not the end of the end of 2022 um so you know i really look forward to that um agorish next is also doing a um and then this is an inside scoop for all of your listeners um oh, nice. I, i've never even mentioned this mentioned this yet but uh agorish nexus is coming out with a um a children's storybook um, an agorist, <laughs> an agorist children's storybook, which should no, be, uh, <laughs> which should be interesting for sure. And, um, and yeah, Wendy McElroy is writing a book for us, which is just amazing. Um, so we'll be publishing that and, uh, what else? We've got other stuff too. Um, I, uh, yeah, we, I mean, at this point, we've got enough content where I'm publishing something like pretty much every single day. I, I almost need to start publishing two things a day, but um, but uh, but it's hard because if I start doing that, then you know, if I if I were to publish like ten things in one day, uh, people wouldn't have enough time to look at all of it. So right. um, I I really try to spread it out, and uh, you know, it's like you know, what other site has. 14 writers you know um besides like cnn or something you know it's uh that's true yeah it's uh yeah i think well actually i think we've got we've got 14 or 15 i, I can't even keep track so but um but yeah what what other what other liberty site has has that many that many authors you know it's um, no that's that that's true a lot of a lot of websites like like the free thought project and others um like have had to basically stop paying their staff um, their writing staff and a lot of them have had to go independent. So the fact that you're, you know, able to, to do what you're doing, um, now I think is, is, uh, maybe even a f further testament, testament to agorism. Um, but, uh, um, yeah. And, uh, and talk, talk about, uh, talk a little bit about the Agoras Nexus podcast too. Uh, you guys just cleared your, uh, was it the hundredth episode? Yeah. Yeah. We just cleared our 100th for sure. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, so, what, yeah, what, what uh, can uh, what what can people uh, you know expect to uh, to find if they go over there and, and, and check it out? Obviously, agorism, but uh, um, yeah, to, to tell uh, tell my my listeners a little bit about uh, your podcast. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's definitely a fun podcast. Um, everything agorist uh, is what we really try to do. Um, some episodes are uh, you know. Some episodes are pretty, pretty, uh, what do I, how do I want to put this? <laughs> um, pretty, uh, pretty out there, but, um, but, it, but it's fun. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, we, we do go over like, uh, we just went over agenda 2030 recently with, uh, with Jeremiah Harding. And, um, even though that wasn't really an agorist episode, I think that, uh, that it, it, it kind of ties into like some of the preparation that we we really need to know like w what they're planning or what they want to do or what they're going to do in order to um, counter it. So it's like it's like if I you know it's like if they're going to implement like some kind of prohibition and I'm an agorist, 
um, and I know it's coming. That way I can like set up infrastructure and, you know, supply lines and manufacturing um, before it goes into prohibition. I'm already ready um, for it when it is uh, prohibited. So I just think that uh, that, that preparation um, or that look into knowledge of, of what they're going to do is, is paramount. And um, we do cover a lot of stuff like that. And then um, we covered a cool little episode of like how to protect your data with this um, like Raspberry Pi type server. Um, that's like super cheap to make yourself and, um, and, and get the software and stuff. Um, that was a really cool episode with Matt Hill of Start9 mm -hmm. um, because we are coming into this like uh, technocratic, uh, super tyrannical state, and um, and yeah, the, the the more that you can keep away from them, the, the better off. And uh, and yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like Google's like not really a, a pri like I wouldn't even consider Google to be. A private company anymore i mean they get so many no. um kickbacks from the government and stuff and and they share information with the government so really they're in my eyes they're really just like another branch um of yeah, the government and we, we even have stuff that, that they were kind of founded as that um if you look back to the, <laughs> yeah, the origins exactly. of their 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 founding yeah it's that's you know the intelligence agency hands all in it for sure Absolutely. I think that's why they changed their name to um, the overall company name to Alphabet. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're, alpha, they're Alphabet boys. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's that. And then, then we, you know, but we've even got stuff that we, um, we even got stuff to where we can counter Google with, you know, uh, pre-search. It's just a great project, and I'm so glad that they they sponsored us because we wouldn't we wouldn't be nearly like Agorist Nexus wouldn't be what it is today without pre-search, and I, I really can't thank them enough and um, for for what they've done. And, and Colin Pape, the the founder and, and CEO of Pre-Search, um, has just truly humbled Agorist Nexus and myself. And um, and yeah, it's 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 been amazing. Um, but, but I also want to say that for, um, for Wendy McElroy, like she made us super legit, um, alone. And, and I'm so glad that, that she started writing for us in, in 2019. Um, and then, you know, Saul Mayweather joined us and, um, and, and, you know, we, we wouldn't be the same without Saul Mayweather and, and yourself. And, um, and uh, you know, I really needed an editor, and um, and you're really my saving grace. So I, you know, I, I can't I can't thank you enough for sure. So hey, I'm appreciative, man. Definitely, definitely appreciative. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I guess I don't know. I don't know if I'm qualified to be proofreading Winnie McElroy's articles, but um, I guess uh, here we are, right? <laughs> yeah. Didn't, didn't think that would ever. Didn't think that would and ever ever uh, ever happen. But. Uh, um, no, Dude, that's, that, that's, yeah. that's some, that's some street, that's some street cred right there. <laughs> I, uh, I, I guess I, it's something. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, that, that all sounds, uh, that all sounds incredible, man. Um, like I, 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 I mentioned Agoras Nexus as much as I, as much as I can, as much as I remember too. I'm bad at plugging my own stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm really bad. I haven't talked about my own book in probably like six or seven podcasts. So. Um, anyway, yes, guys, make sure to go to agorasnexus.com. Check out the directory, the podcast, um, all of uh, all of that good stuff. And uh, we'll certainly have uh, Brandon back on uh, in the future. Maybe when the documentary releases, uh, maybe uh, we'll, we'll 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 just have to see. Um, but yeah, Brandon, before I let you go, did you have any other uh, any other closing thoughts uh, that you'd like to leave the listeners with? Yeah, uh, you know. Um with uh, agorism and, and uh, I think it's Von, how do, how do you pronounce it? Von, I, I usually pronounce it Vonuism. Um, is, is that correct way to pronounce it? Vonu is, Vonu is how I pronounce it. Vonu, Vonuism. Yeah. Yeah. Von Vonu, Vonuism. It's, yeah. well, it's, and see, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because we found out that we were pronouncing it wrong two years into the podcast and we just went with it. So well, however you want to say it. it's kind of like agorist <laughs> or agorist who gives a shit at this point, right? 
we know what we're talking about <laughs> yeah 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 as long as you do it you know but um <laughs> but uh yeah with with the gorism and, and vanyuism um you can really create a uh a more f free society and it really just starts with with yourself so um so yeah that that's where i want to leave it and uh and yeah thanks again for having me on hey no problem man i'm, I'm really appreciative of, of, uh, of you coming on and uh, of course and obviously thanks again for uh, you know for the for the for the you know um the great honor of uh you know edit being you know editing and contributing over there it's uh it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun and i and i definitely enjoy it so um yeah, guys, uh, um, thanks so much for tuning in to uh, this episode of uh, the Vanu Podcast. Um, please also remember the website, vanupodcast.com. Uh, it's the best resource on there, uh, best resource out there for all things Vanu. <clears throat> um, check out the Episodes tab to view every episode uh, divided by season, uh, the Free Books tab for free books and audiobooks, uh, including the book that started this podcast, uh, Rayo's Vanu, The Search for Personal Freedom, uh, The Vanu Beginner's Guide, uh, and much, much more. Uh, again, the website is vanupodcast.com. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, also, uh, again, uh, for everything The Free Republic, uh, that website is paznia.com. And uh, do consider joining the Paznia Committee of Correspondence. Uh, it is a Telegram group, um, and as uh, Brandon was just mentioning... <clears throat> towards the end of that conversation there with starting on um it will be uh, eventually the pasnia committee's cor correspondence and everything pasnia will be uh, located on our own little uh, i guess start nine type thing um using uh, the using using the freedom box platform um for the for the pasnia library so um lots of uh, really awesome stuff in store from from us here uh, and also uh, the folks over at agoras nexus so i'll put all, all links to show links uh, in the show notes to all those things uh thanks so much for tuning in guys and always remember vanu is yours for the making and the second realm is yours for the building is Cheers. it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected in the novella hashtag agora daniel larusso finds out the answer firsthand after discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.